The first launch of a colonial cruiser can be traced back to the year 2069. Created for use by the then new colonial military administration, these cruisers would contribute to the start and end of the colonial wars only decades later. The first ship, the UES All Under Heaven, bristled with flat guns, forward grazer banks, and enough missiles to deal with expected threats such as pirates. Most importantly, she could deploy for up to five years at a time and project the power of the inner colonies outward towards frontier space. This control of the frontier would only tighten in the coming decades, and with it, a new kind of threat would emerge. Hello and welcome back to the United Earth States in Aurora 4X. We are here once again after some technical issues. Pretty much everything is the same as it was. There are a few differences that I want to go over and I want to thank personally um, the person known as somebody on the Discord who helped to fix the database and allow you guys to still watch this series as I was gave, I gave up all hope almost. So... What has changed? Well, we have all the ships we used to have. Everything else in terms of non-ship stuff is fine. Things are not in the places they should be. Um, some of the stuff I've moved back to where they should be, but some of the stuff is not where they should be. There are some other differences, um, but overall, it's about the same. As you can see here, I also redesigned the naval command structure. And so we now have two distinct parts of our forces we have the united earth navy which has our primary combat forces and then we have the colonial military authority which has our um, planetary defense colonial protection so escort squadrons patrol squadrons um, and also their own troop uh, fleet troop transports under the colonial military authority which is subservient to the colonial administration authority if anyone's um played or, or know, knows Halo lore, it's very similar to that, essentially. We have the Colonial Transport Authority, which has a lot of freighters, support divisions, and all the other stuff. And then we have our Exploration Authority, which has a lot of survey with our resource extraction handled by fuel harvesting and transportation assets. So, what shall we do? Well, something that I want to be focusing on is trying to do as much colonization as possible and trying to get our mine situation improved. One of the biggest issues we currently have is that we have a lack of neutronium mining as well as macasium mining. Macasium especially is extremely important because it allows us to build, most importantly, research facilities. Research facilities that are vital to growing industry and growing capacity. So we are going to attempt to mine as much macasium as we can get our hands on. Places like 2002 TC302 have access to neutronium, which we need for shipyards and other resources. While in terms of macasium, there is the system of V1216, which has access to lots of macasium on the relatively low colony cost world, and that's going to be a priority for colonization purposes. We also see that Kruger has access to a lot of resources. This is where Dunning Colony, or... Um, where, yeah, uh, Dunning Colony is located, which we have just had a million people arrive on. And um, in the world uh, we have nearby, we have decent amount of resources there, we have decent amount of resources there, we have a decent amount of resources here, Macasium especially, on this terrestrial world. So there was definitely a lot of resources here that we can make some good use of. Um, and there's also a lot of fuel in system. Uh, which we can harvest. Something that I also want to be doing is probably moving our fuel harvesters elsewhere. I've also designed a few new ships for the next generation of warships, which should be coming in the next five years. I've designed Block 2 variants, uh, or I will be designing Block 2 variants for these vessels, uh, which can mean light cruiser and all the other stuff. But also, I've designed a Colonial Cruiser. The point of the Colonial Cruiser is that it is a smaller cruiser than a standard cruiser it has traded weapons and armor for endurance capability but it can still pack a decent punch with 16 size 8 missiles and enough magazine capacity to do decently well um, it also features a okay point defense capability as well as six layers of armor and two plasma carronade weapons which allows it to basically patrol the outer edges of the sector space so one of these could be deployed let's say to kruger 60 and they could remain there for five years 
Um, and that means that we can have protection in colonies that we don't yet have full infrastructure at, but we can still provide that support with a colonial cruiser. I've also designed the cargo ship, uh, the Car Advark class of ship, and the Germany class replenishment ship. Both of these are commercial vessels with the purpose of resupplying and refueling squadron based um, forces. Relatively cheap and easy to maintain, these will be our primary uh, use. This handles dry cargo, essentially ammunition supplies. This handles supplies and fuel, which is enough fuel to refuel, refuel an entire squadron of ships. All right, let's begin, shall we? So I've begun moving over um, our fuel harvesters to 61 Signy B. The reason for this is that 61 Signy B has access to Accessibility 1 Saurium, which means we'll actually get the full amount of fuel needed um, in system. So that's going to be something that I'm going to be wanting to grab. I also want to build a bigger fuel tankers for more efficiency, but for now it's fine. So something that I really want to prioritize as well is terraforming efforts. Now we've moved 18 terraforming installations to New Harmony. The reason for this is that terraforming can be relatively quickly done, but we have a lot of water to add to the planet. Polaris, on the other hand, if we can reduce the, um, uh, if we if we can just warm it up a little bit or actually freeze it, we've got a good colony there. Dionysus over here, all we just have to do is drop the oxygen just by a little bit. And so that's going to be something that I also want to focus on as well. Um, so if I can do that, I'll be in a decent position. Uh, we are building terraforming installations, of course. Um, so we're going to wait for a few more of those to be built, and then I'm going to ship them over to Dionysus. We totally completed for our troop transports, so that is our new troop transports. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start building those. UES Devonshire, UES Essex. And so with the Colonial Military Authority, what we'll do is we'll be assigning uh, forces to that authority. We'll still have the army and stuff, but they will get specific forces um, and they will be uh, provided to them as needed. We currently have our um, second uh, division. So that is, yeah, the second division is on the way back to Earth. So if we go over to the... Um, United States, oh not United, United Earth Navy, and we look at our transport division. We're currently 49 days out, and we're going to arrive at Earth and unload the second infantry division, and then get replacements for it eventually. So I have also begun manufacturing commercial nuclear pulse engines for our ships, and that'll allow us to build um, freighters quicker. Um, and the reason I want to build freighters quicker is, of course, I want to expand our infrastructure capabilities, expand out our transportation capabilities. Um, because the way I see it is that because of Mars amazing mining capability, we are going to be able to spread stuff, but we need to expand that production as much as possible. Now, Mars has 8.7 million tons of corundium and accessibility one. That is enough for about 70,000 mines, which basically does us the entire game, at least hopefully. Um, so we're going to need to transport that corundium, which we are currently doing, and we have a lot of corundium, and then we need to build up a construction capacity that will be able to make use of it. Part of that is that we need to finish up our techs, and I'm actually going to refocus our efforts towards industrial technologies. The reason that I'm going to do this is because I feel, you know, in RP and common sense, despite there being alien threats and we've lost ships and, you know, we definitely learned that we need a proper military. Humanity's in the golden age at the moment. We have colonies. We need to just increase industrial capacity and kind of use that to become a real industrial power going forward, a real economic, political and industrial power. Okay, let's go ahead and start refitting. So these are block twos. I basically just improved the armor. Um, very low refit needed, but it does give them an extra layer of armor, which does you know, help quite a bit um, in potential fights. So the first troop transport division has arrived back at Earth. So they will have unloaded, and we have now the row... Danny and the rest of the ships that are ready to be re-brought back in. So we're going to put them under the fourth escort, or the second escort flotilla, um, and we're going to call this the fourth cruiser destroyer squadron, or the fifth cruiser. Have them refuel, resupply, and begin an overhaul. And 
And then with our troop transports, we're going to hold them there for now. Um, they will be very important soon enough. And we also have another troop transport, so I'm going to move that over as well. But the um, those forces now are right at the back on Earth, and we will get them healed up and uh, helped um, as much as we can. And they've gone straight back into the organization here, which is nice to see. They will need, of course, those replacements, though. I've also begun moving mines over to Vesta, so now we have 3 million mines, uh, not 3 million mines, but we have mines at Vesta, and that's about 2,000 tons of resources that we'll be shipping back. We can actually see production quantities across the board here. Um, as you can tell, our neutronium mining is not great, and our Macasium mining is awful. So Macasium needs to be a priority here if we're going to make things work. We moved over maintenance supplies to Dionysus now. The reason I'm doing this, of course, is so that we can have a garrison on system. We do need to move over some additional fuel, though. But uh, for now, this is fine. So we're going to go set up a logistics force to begin moving those supplies over. Missile retargeting capability done. Now, that's going to be very important for um, any missile missiles, which we will be looking into. All right, I want to improve our construction uh, rate as much as we can. That's 10. Unfortunately, without any construction and production, we actually need to build more military academies, generally speaking. Um, we're going to have some of the research finish up as well as the maintenance module. We are going to need some more shipyards as well. Um, and I'm also going to continue to upgrade this ship, this to 150. Actually, we're going to retool this for... Still waiting on the uh, nuclear gas core engine, though. Which should be done relatively soon. Uh, which is good to see. Okay, maintenance module done. And we've also completed overhauls across the board. Um, now we have these forces here. I'm going to actually increase this to 30,000 tons. We are using a lot of uh, neutronium, though. Uranium's not an issue. We have plenty of uranium on Mars. We can easily make work with that um completely fine uh, that is not the issue whatsoever it's just all the other stuff um i'm also going to order the first colonial protection wait hello and this first colonial protection fleet i'm going to order patrol squadron orbital defense group 111 we are going to create the Altair Defense Zone. And then we are going to create a fleet, which will be the Orbital Defense Group 1. And we're going to move that over to Dionysus. I'm then going to order the... Let's do the 7th Frigate Division. Uh, which is free and good to go. We're going to send you over to Altair, and I'm going to have you join that fleet. We're going to begin moving over terraforming installations to Dancers. Get that begin, well, begin its terraforming efforts. Uh, New Harmony, again, has 18 installations and is still going well with it. We're going to go ahead and see if we can assign up a terraforming person. Not really, unfortunately. Um, we should also have our first sector command done. Yes, we do. Now, first sector command allows us to go over to here. Assign this to the soul sector. Assign this to the soul sector. Um, and we can then move over or assign a governor. who will provide his bonus to system wide. So we want a person who's good at mining, ideally. Well, that's um, unfortunate. What about population growth? We'll go with you then, and we will institute you onto the soul sector. Oh, you're only admin level two. Okay, we need someone who's at least admin level six. Wow, we have slim pickings here. Um, Mars has a mining person. Let's assign you then. 
to the salt sector. And then let's get Mars a new governor, please. Wow, we have like no governors. Um, yeah, we have like no governors. Uh, Swing administrator. Well, at the very least, we'll assign you and uh, you might be able to train up. Okay, we have our LAC shipyard done. Now, I'm probably going to redesignate these to Corvettes. The purpose of these will be in-system defense. Um, they will be able to take over that role at a lower maintenance requirement over the current frigates we have in place. So that would be their primary duty. Um, we just need to get the uh, engine research, which we are currently waiting on. Because we need to get the nuclear gas core. There's going to be a lot of back-end stuff that we need to do for that. Okay, nuclear gas core engine completed. Um, so we're going to do two labs onto that. We're also getting that construction and production on the way. Uh, do I have... I have missile connects 40%. Don't have any construction and production scientist. Um, in terms of building up other stuff, we have our telephone installations being built, which is good to see. If, okay, so with that gas core engine now done, I'm going to go set everything up. <laughs> We've now been able to start building our support platform. So these will be with our defense platforms and provide us proper defense on our jump points. Um, so once our some of our industry has done, we'll be able to go ahead with that. We've also nearly done all of our initial ground force construction facilities that I wanted to build. Um, so that is speeding up our construction efforts. We have 90 more formations to build. And then we'll obviously have to build some more stuff after that. Okay, we've been able to stabilize properly in... or not stabilize properly in Skadden Star, but we have been able to, if we go to the Hyperion, we now have a jump point into Ro Libre, and then we can start stabilizing the other end and get into Ro Libre. Again, we're trying to get over to 99 SETI. Of course, to get to 99 SETI, we are going to have to kill a lot of aliens, but, you know, that's a later problem. So we've finally stabilized up to uh, Australis. Now, Australis actually has a lot of comets with a lot of resources, so definitely now we want to be looking at colonizing. This terrestrial world here has a little bit too much gravity. Fortunate, but this moon is, is okay. Uh, Resource-wise, though, we can definitely collect from it, and so what I am going to do is I'm going to order... A troop transport. So I'm going to take the Asculus and we're going to load up um, analysis forces. We're going to load up those formations and then we're going to take them over to Australis and we're going to place them on this moon. And I'm going to have a frigate squadron join them for escort duty. Okay, so now with that done, uh, we are going to, I think, we're going to start building more construction factories. Uh, 200 more. Get them built because we need as much construction capacity as we can on Earth. Okay, with that commercial engine now done, we have some of our new ships coming online. Now, I want to reassign or retool for cargo ship. The Aardvark class cargo ship. That lets us build the Gemini and the other ships. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to build... Germany, I'm going to go ahead and build an aardvark, and that should support our military operations much better than previous designs. So we're going to get those built, and uh, we have been massively expanding the number of freighters we actually have available. If we look over at the shipyard over here, we have four more Block 2s, we've got a ton more Zanzibar class ships who are all doing things that are very, very important. 
um, and hopefully have the uh, first down forming. Yes, they have. We're going to begin to move. Um, we'll get the oxygen moved back to 2.99, ideally. So that's what we'll be doing there. Um, and that should hopefully start removing it. Okay, with those that stuff now done, we're going to look at improving missile capability, uh, which is at that. We are going to design a new generation of missiles, so we're going to go ahead with the Mark III grade. Um, I'm also going to look at designing some mines and building those, but for now we're going to design the Mark III. Now, the Mark III is going to use, obviously, um, our new engine technology, uh, and it's just going to be this kind of an upgrade. So we're going to go ahead and create the Mark IV. That's what it's going to be now. Mark IV, and then we're going to create the Mark IV weapon over here, which gets us a much faster speed. So we're going to create those two things. And then we're going to create ourselves a new missile. So this is going to have zero warhead. It's going to have a decent range. So we're going to actually drop the engine power consumption. It will carry... Ah, uh, we've got to wait for the research for the other stuff first. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to research those missiles first. Okay, we've now been able to access Ro Libre, which is great news. Uh, we're going to have the Hyperion then continue on uh, to stabilize. Actually, we're going to get you to go to um, the Five Pucci and refuel, and then you're going to head back over to Ro Libre and start stabilizing into that jump point. In terms of survey operations, what do we have available to us? Uh, let me go over to Survey Division. You are going to head to Ro Libre. Enter that jump point, please. You are going to head to Ro Libre and enter that jump point. And third survey division, you are going to head to 1990, please. Um, we are going to, of course, ban that body though, uh, which is here, which we've already done. So transit through that point. We should still have. Yeah, there should still be actual survey locations to survey, so just head to really, uh, just head to 99 City. Okay, so that should hopefully get them surveying. Have we moved over those ground forces to um, T Garden Star? So the first colonists have arrived on V1216 Sagittari over here. Um, so let me check our forces. It's like we haven't arrived yet. So let's create our Stratus. Ships. Okay, they'll arrive soon. Just waiting for this and then we can start building colonial cruisers. Now, to build colonial cruisers, we're going to need to have a replacement shipyard available. Um, and so we're going to have this shipyard handle that. We tool. We're not going to be able to build light cruisers for a while. Because um, we are building the shipyard up for battle cruisers, but that's fine in my opinion. Um, can I get some more of the defense platforms? Okay, we're going to build the block three now. One, two, three. And I'm going to cancel these engines because we don't need the mass production too, too much anymore. Um, and we're going to start building Seaford class um, defense stations. Um, so we'll get those ready to go. In fact, I can start moving over those defense platforms now-ish. Um, when we need to. But for now, we're going we're gonna to hold off. Uh, we've discovered the new jump connection to the known system of AT Aranius. So these systems are now connected. So we're going to uh, reorganize that. So that is now the connection in this area. So we're going to call this Labrain Expanse, of course. And how has that affected times to reach areas? 10.6, 17.3, the Astralis point is very far away but we can reach these areas relatively easily first survey division give me a report uh first survey 
give me a report on survey authority. Okay, good. Survey next to system bodies. Survey next to survey location. Make sure we actually put these guys on that. So you're unable to carry that out. So I'm going to have the first survey division instead. Head to... We found the system of Serpentis. Serpentis? Um, I'm going to have you instead head to 99 SETI and then to this drum point. We discovered a system of TZ Ariatus. Nothing so far in system. So we'll hold off for now. 25 centimeter carronades completed, which is good news. Um, can I get no construction production scientists? Are you kidding me? Um, finish off these engines. Terraforming rate is okay. Missile and kinetics is okay. I would like to get our sense of fire control situation improved, so I'm actually going to give that 10 labs. Construction and production, I'm going to start just reassigning manually, I think. Um, who do we have a lot of? We have a lot of missile and kinetic scientists. Uh, you're going to be changed to a construction and production scientist. You are going to be changed to a construction and production scientist. And then with that, I am going to assign appropriate amounts of labs. I want mining production increased. Like that. And then we'll get those continuing research. Hopefully they'll level up over time. System of HO Libre discovered. Not too, too interesting, but as we can see here, is going off into the northern section as we have explored only 40 star systems so far. First Gemini class replenishment ship completed. Perfect news. So we're going to keep building those as much as we can. So those will be under 50,000 tons. So Gemini. Yeah. And then build as many as we can because those will be very, very important for resupply, refuel, and all the other effort. So if I go over to. Um, combat Auxiliary Force and we go to NAF shipyard we can see well these need to be all sorted out because they're all in the NAF shipyard for some reason they need to be repaired the Gemini however can be moved over to fleet tankers we're going to refuel and then we're going to head you over to Australis and then I'm going to need to ask, not ask, but I'm going to need to make sure that our troop transport division is good to go supply-wise. We're just going to hold you there, and then we're also obviously ground surveying at the moment. Okay, slipways were added. So we're going to retool now for the Spain class. And I am going to now assign this to be for the CAA. There we go. And we'll add a slip point for this as well. And we are going to start building the Aegis Fate. So we'll put that under the CMA shipyard. UES All Under Heaven will be the first vessel built. And that'll be done by 2069. That's the largest ever military ship we've ever built. So that's good to see. And I think that's where I'll leave the episode off. Hope you guys have enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. And uh, yeah, we're back and uh, we're here as we advance further and further as the United Earth States.